Hello and welcome to this clip on free radical substitution mechanisms. We'll go through the initiation, propagation and termination stages of the mechanism and why this particular mechanism is the one that alkanes react by. We look at how different mixtures of products can form at the end and we'll finish by doing a quick worked exam question on this topic. So first of all, a radical is any species with an unpaired electron. These are the four most common radicals you'll come across on A-level questions. And the small dot we've drawn next to each of them signifies the unpaired electron. And just to illustrate one example, a chlorine radical is essentially a chlorine atom. Uh, you've got seven electrons in the outer shell, and one of them is unpaired, and that will be your unpaired electron that we'd use to represent the little dot. You could do exactly the same for any of the other um, radicals that we've got, that we looked at, uh, in the same way, provided there is an unpaired electron in the outer shell, it would be a radical. And this is the equivalent example for a nitrogen monoxide radical. As you can see, the nitrogen atom carries the unpaired electron. This time there's a double bond between nitrogen and oxygen. Oxygen has eight electrons in its outer shell, including the two that it's sharing with nitrogen. And it's also got um, two from nitrogen in the covalent bond. You can see that clearly in the double bond. But in the nitrogen, you have dots representing its electrons, and one of those dots is unpaired, which means the electron is unpaired, hence why we draw a little dot next to the nitrogen. So let's look at the starting point of the mechanism using chlorine as an example. What happens is ultraviolet light causes splitting of the chlorine molecules into chlorine atoms. And this process happens through something called homolytic fission, which means that the covalent bond breaks with one of the bonding pair of electrons going to each of the two atoms. So basically, each atom gets one electron from the bond. Now, strong heat can do this process for you as well, but usually we say in A-level chemistry that it's done under the influence of ultraviolet light. Now, these radicals are extremely reactive. What they want to do, more than anything, is to find another electron for their unpaired electron to pair up with. So the next step is the propagation step. So we're still staying with chlorine, and we're imagining that we've now got a chlorine radical attacking a methane molecule. So in the first equation at the top, a chlorine radical attacks a methane molecule by breaking one of the nonpolar CH bonds to form HCl. And a methyl radical is left behind. And it's worth pointing out at this stage that radicals are the only species that are reactive enough to attack nonpolar bonds successfully, such as those found in alkanes. Other reacting species, such as nucleophiles or electrophiles, require polar bonds. So coming back to our methyl radical, that can now attack another chlorine. So remembering that not all of our original stock of chlorine molecules has been turned into radicals during initiation, by UV light. This means that the methyl radical, in other words, this character here, can go on and attack another chlorine. And what this process forms is chloromethane and another chlorine radical, which can go on and do the first step above. So this other chlorine radical here can go on and do the same as what's in the first part at the top, like that. So the propagation step happens over and over and over and over again. In fact, it can happen many millions of times. So basically what happens in a propagation step is a radical reacts with a molecule to form a new radical and a new molecule. The final stage of the free radical um, substitution mechanism is called the termination stage. And all that happens in the termination step 
is radicals that are left over react with each other to form molecules. So let's pull this all together and see it in initiation, propagation, and termination. So first of all, the ultraviolet light breaks the chlorine-chlorine uh, covalent bonds homolytically, producing chlorine-free radicals. And then in propagation, you get the free radicals um, that are reacting with molecules to produce new free radicals and new molecules. In termination, free radicals that are left over react with each other and form molecules and as such are removed from the reaction mixture. And what's interesting as well is that you can get further substitution of reaction products. So in the termination stage you can see that we've made CH3Cl and we've also made CH3CH3. In other words, chloromethane and ethane. Both of these are susceptible to further attack in exactly the same way by leftover chlorine radicals. And this quite often is what happens if the uh, reaction is allowed to actually just go by itself. We can actually control um, what direction the reaction takes. In other words, what proportion of the reaction mixture contains what particular products. And the way we do this is by deciding what's in excess at the start. If we have excess methane, that means that chlorine is in limited supply, so it tends to stop at CH3Cl. If we have excess chlorine, it means that the methane is in limited supply, so what the chlorine that's left over will tend to do is what we've just discussed. It'll go and attack other reaction products in the termination steps. In other words, things like chloromethane and ethane will undergo further substitution uh, under the influence of excess chlorine. So let's now try a typical exam style question. The first part's quite easy because we've just talked about it a few minutes ago. So it's obviously ultraviolet light. Initiation and propagation have three marks attached to them. And initiation is covered by doing Cl2 turning into 2Cl dot. The propagation step, if you remember, is when, you, when a radical actually attacks another molecule to make a new radical. And one of the propagation steps is the formation of a butyl radical, C4H9 dot. What I've done, though, is I've put the dot next to the carbon because it's one of the carbon-hydrogen bonds that's broken. So it's the carbon atom that will hold the unpair electron. And you put the HCl next to it, obviously, as the product that's formed. The H is what the chlorine radical reacts with to form HCl, leaving the butyl radical behind. Then the butyl radical goes back and attacks an, a fresh chlorine atom, sorry, chlorine molecule, I should say, to produce C4H9Cl, or chlorobutane, and it regenerates Cl dot, regenerates the chlorine radical that was used in the first propagation step. So the next thing that we're asked to do is to write one possible equation. We don't have to write all of them, it just says one. So what you do is you choose two radicals that would go together to make a molecule. So that's one possibility. And obviously the type of bond fission involved in the initiation is homolytic, like we said a few minutes ago. So let's now move the page down and have a look at the last part. It says, one of the possible products of the reaction between butane and chlorine is compound J. So we have to name compound J, so this is going slightly outside the scope of this particular video clip, but I'm assuming that you've done some naming of organic compounds already, because we usually cover free radical substitution as we do um, alkanes, which includes naming as well. So I've added the name plus the skeletal formula. And it says, in addition to compound J, suggest one of the possible structural isomer of C4HHCl2 that could have been formed in this reaction. So let's bring the page down to allow us to do this. And we've got four possibilities. We've got one four. We've got one two. We've got 1,3, and we've got 1,1 one, one dichlorobutane. All it involves is choosing one, 
and putting the skeletal formula in. Don't worry about having to put the names in, I just did that for illustrative purposes. So hopefully this has been a reasonably useful introduction or possibly even a review of free radical substitution. If you've got any queries, then do bring them in to your teacher or maybe come and see one of us in a subject extension college. In the meantime, thanks for your time and see you soon.